Today News Update. This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, August 24. So glad you could join us. Troubling issues confronting the Scotland district will be treated with priority. Prime Minister Mia Motley offered residents of St Andrew that assurance as she hosted the St Andrew Speaks Town Hall meeting at the Allen School in Bell Plain last night. She said while government's plan to develop the area has been stalled, it remains a priority. She expressed concern about the number of people leaving the Scotland district. Coming into office, we went straight into an IMF program and we went straight into rationalizing the state-owned enterprises. That was put on pause because of COVID. We are coming out of COVID now. I've signaled that we have to look and keep on top of the rationalization of the state-owned enterprises, of which a critical one is going to have to be how we deal with the Scotland District Authority and how we deal with the rural development within the context of this one-seventh area of Barbados. One-seventh of Barbados is the Scotland District. Okay? And regrettably, what we have seen over the last few decades is people moving out of St. Andrew. People moving out of St. Joseph, people moving out of um, parts of St. Peter, largely because we've not carried the services to the people. Motley outlined plans to develop the Scotland district. There is a planning program for bringing services back to the Scotland district so that people will want to remain in the Scotland district living. Now, it means how we build and where we build is of the utmost importance. And that's why even up to yesterday, um, the Member of Parliament took us to an area in Shori Village where he wants to do housing, correct? And we've agreed with Mr. Lord that we will look and see what conditions can attach to us being able to do housing on that flat point there in Shori Village. New legislation to improve the lives of the disabled will soon be laid in Parliament. Word of this from Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Kurt Humphrey, Speaking on the sidelines of Camp Reach, hosted by the National Disabilities Unit for Disabled Children, Minister Humphrey said it's a critical step. We have actually received the draft legislation um, for disabilities, and that will be the first time that Barbados would have that kind of legislation. I am hopeful to have that before the Parliament and debated by the end of the year. Um, in my mind, persons with disabilities remain one of the most disadvantaged groups in Barbados. And given the number of persons we have with disabilities, given the importance that they play in my mind to society, then the fact that we are able to bring this legislation is important. Minister Humphrey is also calling for the private sector to support more initiatives to assist the disabled community. To be able to support camps like these so that we can have more camps. Two, to have a deliberate policy for hiring persons with disabilities. And I've already seen that there are some entities that have started the process. We recently had a request um, to be able to source directly persons with disabilities so that we can do that and to partner with the government generally. I think ultimately my last request is to help us build the facility to assist persons who have disabilities, especially persons um, past the age of 16 because in Barbados currently there are no facilities for persons with disabilities as they become adults. In other news, Minister of Youth Charles Griffith is giving this year's summer camps the thumbs up. Following a tour today of some of the 40 camps, Griffith assured that all is well. I'm very, very pleased about the outcome of what I saw at the camps. Um, it is evident that uh, the children totally enjoyed themselves. Every single camp that I would have visited today and asked um, the, the, the campers about the camp, all of them totally enjoyed the experience. Um, we're here at the Disabilities Unit. Um, every year the ministry catered to the disability that, that particular demographic. If it's not Anne Hill, well this year it is now here. But the camps were a success this year and I'm very, very pleased about the outcome. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Cure oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over one billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge, from strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. 
join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news, surging energy prices are adversely impacting most countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, but Guyana is one of the few benefiting from this and expects a massive expansion of the local economy this year. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC, in a new economic survey published on Tuesday, noted that economic growth in the region is expected to be about 2.7% this year. This follows a 6.5% growth rate in 2021 and signals the path of low growth in the region. But Guyana seems to be a standout during this era of low growth. According to ECLAC, it is now projected that Guyana's gross domestic product, GDP, will expand by a whooping 52% percent this year. Because of Guyana's expected growth, the Caribbean should record a 10.2 percent rate of growth. Excluding Guyana, the expected growth drops to just about 4.7 percent. Gross domestic product simply refers to the monetary value of all finished goods and services made within a country during a specified period. Much of Guyana's expected gains this year have been attributed to the nascent oil and gas sector and the surging cost of energy and food around the globe. ECLAP noted that Guyana will earn much more for selling its oil internationally. But as Guyana gets more money, ECLAC noted that the country is not spared by the harmful effect of inflation being experienced around the world. With this phenomenon, simply consumers are paying much more for the same goods and services. Notably, however, Guyana is expected to face the lowest level of inflation. This means that while consumers will grapple with surging costs for items, it is not as bad as the editor's group ECLAC mentioned. On the international scene, Angolans cast their ballots today in what was expected to be the most competitive vote in the country's democratic history. The MPLA, the party which has been in power since independence in 1975, is facing an unprecedented wave of discontent over the economy. Angolans have been hit hard by the economic crisis, which began in 2014 due to global uh, falling uh, uh, oil prices uh, and a crisis that was further aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past five years, uh, the unemployment rate crept up from 24% to 30% inflation is also high at 25% and an increasing number of Angolans are struggling to put food on their table. UNITA, the main historic uh, opposition party, is hoping to capitalise on uh, voters' frustrations and it's been especially popular with the young voters, young voters many of whom uh, were born after the end of the civil war in 2002 and therefore have a different relationship with politics. They don't have the same uh, type of traditional affiliations to either the MPLA or UNITA. What what they want is better living conditions for all Angolans. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on our Zooming Medium bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.